Kyle Higgins does it. Oh, let me see Craig Drew. Previously on Launch Control. A welcome break in the race calendar found the entire team back in Vermont. A rare chance to regroup and prepare for the final push to the end of the season. A hectic back-to-back -back schedule across the country. Although it does look seamless on the outside and everything's working great, we're like a duck on water. The legs underneath the water are going like crazy to keep up with it. The break gave the team time for family, fun, and a one-off event in Canada to test their Subaru against fresh European competitors. Carl Pontier slotted out behind his Ixon in the Subaru, and that was how they finished. We came here and we mixed it up, and uh, we had two heat wins on our first try, and uh, it was a successful test for us. Mark it tonight, hey! But that time is behind them. The two rally Subarus are in Detroit Lakes, Minnesota, Two rallycross cars have arrived in Daytona, Florida. The mid-season break is over. It's time to compete. This is Launch Control. downtown streets of Detroit Lakes, Minnesota, rally cars line up for day two of the Ojibwe Forest Rally. With the Rally America Championship already sewn up by David Higgins, each remaining rally is an all-or-nothing battle for the win. I think if anything, it's going to get harder to beat David now that he's the championship because he's got nothing to lose. The guy's going to be going flat out. Christy and I got to beat him. Might be a little optimistic, but I think we got a shot. I'm not going to let him have it. He's got to fight for it, so nobody ever gave me one easy. <laughs> It's not a victory yet, but the team has given Travis something else he wanted. Travis has got a thing about having a Dixie horn and he's been going on and on and on about it for weeks. So we decided, since he's been a good boy, we'd fit the Dixie horn to the car. I had a bet with this guy that if we finished the first race on the podium, they put it in, but they didn't put it in. So then I had a bet that if I ever beat this guy, they put it in. Well, I haven't done that, but maybe I just I haven't, I haven't crashed any cars this year, so, so maybe it's a thank you. It's all smiles for now. Thanks, guys. But they'll soon have their race face on. In Daytona, the rallycross team is already preparing for their second day of action. Bucky Lassick sits down with engineer Michael Zotos to discuss and improve their race setup. If we go by the data, the RPM goes up because the car is spinning, it stays stationary, it's why am I not moving? I would, I would try to rotate the car, let the car rotate, carry momentum, and then get on the gas and it wouldn't be there. And can that be a spike because that diff is open and let it kind of free rev? Because you could hear him track out on power and then wabla, and then finally when it's straight, it would hook up and go. So whenever my car goes up on two wheels, I'm back on throttle as a mechanical slip and Marvin walked me every lap. Many cars struggled yesterday in the record heat. Temperatures well over 100 degrees introduced new challenges. But I'm really, it's really hot in my head now. I'm really uh, frustrating and I, I really don't know what's happening. Sfera struggled on launches and Lasik's differential settings left him struggling to find traction. But it's all part of developing a race car. The race action today is what counts. They take to the track for morning practice. Just three short laps to see if their modifications have worked. Otherwise, it could be a long, hot day of racing. Travis and Chrissy may be first on the road, but they trail Higgins and Drew by four seconds. They showed immense speed in New England, 
and if they can find that kind of pace again, they might have a shot at their first victory of the year. For the number 75 team, the mission is very different. They have had as successful a season as anyone could hope for, but they aren't about to back off. David and Craig never want to lose. Travis and Chrissy always want to win. Right four plus, 50. Flat press, 60, right four. Two stage wins means Pastrana is keeping Higgins on his toes. Left five, 100, right six in over crest then. Flat press, 180. Big crest, 65, left four minus. By midday, Pastrana is only down by nine seconds. With the 199 car nipping at their heels, there is no way they can cruise to victory. Their pace is simply too closely matched. Into the night, and the battle rages on. Both teams will complete over 70 miles of competitive stages and end the day with less than 30 seconds between them. It's anybody's rally to win. In Daytona, both cars return from practice. Sfera's issues seem resolved. It's early yet, but the team is hopeful they've found a solution. Um, we found that the water spray wasn't working on the radiator, so the temperatures were coming up. So we've corrected that, and the temperature should be low, and the power should be there. Bucky's setup changes were successful, and he's more than pleased. Much better, much better. Nothing like a stiff diff in the morning. <laughs> the cars and drivers are ushered to the infield for the opening ceremonies. And then quickly regroup to the pre-grid area. It's crazy. We changed the diff, and then overnight they rebuilt a different diff, a different diff for me. So it made a big difference. Yeah. Yeah. Bucky lines up for his heat race. Farah takes to the track soon after for his race. Top three in each heat advance directly to the final. The lights go out, the car is launched. A rare stumble for Sfera. He's playing catch up. While Bucky takes the outside and saves his joker lap for later. Two corners in, and Sfera has worked his way up to third. Lassick lands a lucky break after a three-car pileup at the hairpin allows him to make a pass around the outside. Sfera isn't so lucky. His hard work is lost when his Subaru stalls and won't restart. Lassick runs a clean race to take a clear second place, directly advancing to the finals. In Minnesota, fans fill the forest for the final day of the rally. Anybody else need help though? The two Subarus are locked in a battle for the win. Morning, sir. With a little friendly banter to start the day. Roll to the wall, Travis. This time, it is Higgins and Drew who take to the stages first. With a narrow margin between them and their teammates, the 75 Subaru has to push to ensure their victory. It won't be easy. The roads are tight, with lots of standing water, making the grip unpredictable. Open, 
Next up is Pastrana and Vivas. Their backs are against the wall. Without substantial stage wins this morning, they'll see their chance of victory dwindle. Their only option is maximum attack. But the first stage of the day will be their last. Over water. And right three over water. Left three plus. Word of Travis's crash makes its way back to the team. We don't know whether uh, he's just slid off or he's had an accident or whatever, so we're just waiting for to get a report on that. So we just sort of sit tight and then sort of react when we when we get more information. What do we need? Do you want us to come get you? Can we flat tow you? It's 12 miles from here, so we'll be there in 12 minutes. They have it. We'll, we'll take a vehicle down to get them. I actually have. They set it up and They are certainly disappointed, but with David and Craig still leading the rally, the result is still looking promising for the team. First day was super difficult, really, really nasty conditions. We had a, a good, good fair few moments, but the more we were doing them and the more we were getting away with it, we decided just to keep pushing on. But then obviously when Travis didn't come out of the stage, then we, we just had to sort of back off. Pushing pretty hard in that first stage, just needed to make up some time and hit a bit of a puddle and then got off the side. It's just the smallest of offs and then we, there's just no way to get back out. Yeah, I'll tell you what, we couldn't have been in a worse spot. We were just getting covered by mud and dirt bruised as they were coming by. And the team, uh, <laughs> they've got a lot of work to do. It's all right, keeps us busy. With the pressure off, the rally team finds a moment to check in on their comrades in Daytona. While they're relaying the results up to us, we're, we're telling them what's going on here at a Chipley Forest rally. Sfera's strong LCQ race puts both Subarus in the final, which is about to begin. It has been a hard two days for the Rallycross team. Constant car setup changes and extreme heat have taken their toll but it was all worth it. Both cars in the final is proof of their perseverance. The green flag drops, and the 10-car final blazes away. Bucky's frontline start position forces him to the outside, but he avoids the chaos as the field jockeys for the inside line. Sfera's LCQ qualifier means he's stuck in the middle of the pack. Bucky takes an aggressive line through the hairpins to cut through the clutter, bringing him back up to fifth with a joker in hand. A few corners later, he finds another inside line to jump to fourth, and then takes the joker at just the right time to claim third. Smart driving and strategy calls now have him in a podium position. Wind's up. So this is live right now. There's six laps in. Sfera is also charging hard. He's moving through the pack of cars, then is up to sixth. Lassick runs lap after solid lap, but Tanner Faust is putting on the pressure. Tanner tucks inside on the long, sweeping right turn. Classic counterattacks and takes his podium spot back. He got it back. Oh, he did. And wow. he's done the Joker. Sfera keeps pushing and runs up to fifth, but will run out of laps to make up more ground. Yeah, you too. Bring it in, bud. Bring it in. Flag. Looks like it. Nice. nice. Good job. 
on a weekend where every Subaru Rally Team USA car was in action. Podium finishes in both disciplines is a testament to the effort put in by the whole team. David Higgins completes his sixth victory of the season with some sideways fun on the final stage of the event, followed by his teammate Pastrana, whose car was repaired simply to put on a show for the fans. This rally wasn't the best to us last year, but we've come here this year and ticked the box, and now Craig's won the full set as well now, so it's a really good way to finish the rally. Sfera is Saxon, always a warrior, fought his way through a tough field for a fifth place finish. Three and five. While Lassick can't contain his joy for his second podium of the year. Another podium for Subaru. Great day for the Subaru camp. Great day for the Bucky Act camp. And just stoked, man. Really stoked. He's worked hard to get here and prove he belongs. I guarantee that we have probably the hardest working team in the paddock right now, um, and we're fighting for wins now. So hats off to my team. I love them, but it's an honor. I'm stoked to see Bucky at me, like, because Bucky's worked really hard. He's, he hasn't been around as late as long as recent I have, but he's been putting in the effort, so that's why he's sitting up here. There is no mistaking it. It's been a massive undertaking, but Subaru Rally Team USA can look at this weekend as an example of just how much they've accomplished. And there's more to come.